Everyone remembers these tears in the Euro 2016 final. Cristiano Ronaldo injured his knee and was forced to abandon his teammates. Everyone also remembers these tears, this time of joy when Portugal won the game. But no one knows the story behind this photo. I was trying to push, uh, 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 motivate him to continue. No one really knew what Nani and CR7 said to each other at that moment. No one realized that the course of the match was about to change. Happily, everyone is about to find out. July 10th, 2016, Stade de France, the final of the Euro. Cristiano Ronaldo had a date with destiny. 12 years after missing the chance to win a first title for his country, fate gave CR7 a second chance. He could win the European Championship against the host country, France's team, who had caused an upset beating Germany. This time, he was at the peak of world football. The outcome would be different. It would be, but Cristiano Ronaldo wouldn't be taking part. After a collision with Dimitri Payet, the Portuguese player injured his knee. But the staff and the players knew how resilient CR7 was. He'd get back up and everything would be fine. He did get back up. He tried once, twice, but nothing was working. It was a last stand because he collapsed, then broke down. I was trying to push, uh, 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 motivate him to continue to see, no, it's, it's a little pain, you can do it. The captain tried, but he had no other choice but to let his second in command take charge. As soon as he told me, crying, it's not possible, I can't do anymore, um, I felt that, 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 that situation and I, I said, the only thing I could say to him, we're gonna win this for you. Um, and then I said, I promise, we're gonna win this for you. Cristiano Ronaldo was stretchered back to the locker room, accompanied by the sound of applause from the Stade de France. Portugal would have to go on without him. Portugal would have to write history without their best player. But Portugal could count on one of their other commanders, an experienced player in European competitions. Nani took charge of the Portuguese squad, and he was determined to keep the promise that he made to his old Manchester friend. That moment, when he said he couldn't do more, he just took the, 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 the handband from, from his arm and then he put on me. Uh, as soon as he put on me, I felt the, the responsibility to tell all the prayers with, but with hunger, because I was feeling hunger for him. So I said, come on guys, now we more than ever, we must win. We must believe we can do it. And then I was shouting to some players on the pitch, come on, come on. Come on. And then that, on the same time, make me feel more power, more energy, more confident. Yes, now I, we can do it. We're going to do it. Already famed for their consistency, Portugal hung on. The players showed solidarity in their misfortune and seemed determined to take revenge on history. Revenge for 2004. During Euro 2004, history seemed to be written. Portugal, at home, were bound to win the final against a modest Greece side. But CR7 and Figo failed. Portugal saw this defeat as a scandal, an injustice. This time, Nani and his teammates wanted to cry with joy. We start to play a little bit better, we start to get on the game, and um, we handle well because France was created chances, we were lucky, we had balls on the post. But I think that uh, situation gives to every player um, extra energy, extra confidence, and we start to believe until the second. That was what made us win the game. Some of France's supporters believed even more in their chances of winning with Cristiano Ronaldo's injury. Bakary Sanya, a starter that day, didn't welcome this news. I 
parce qu'il bridait tout le monde. Il bride tout le monde par son, par son charisme. Il bride son équipe. Il crie sur ses joueurs, il crie. Donc tout le monde se focalise sur lui. Ils n'osent pas frapper quand il doit frapper parce qu'ils vont chercher Cristiano. Des trucs comme ça. It's true that Portugal were heavily dependent on Cristiano Ronaldo to make the difference in Euro 2016. He was involved in three of Portugal's four goals in the group stages. He scored his penalty in the quarterfinals. And he opened the scoring in the semifinals. As much as his injury hurt and created fear, it also boosted his teammates. CR7's injury was a trigger for his teammates. Je me souviens qu'il y avait Nani à côté de moi, il avait les larmes aux yeux. Il a commencé à avoir les larmes remplies de, de larmes, tu vois. Je me dis, wow. Je me dis, en fait, pour, eux, dans, pour lui, dans sa tête, il pense qu'ils qu qu ont déjà perdu. Et moi, je me suis dit, il sort, c'est pas bon. C'est pas bon parce que, justement, et en plus pour lui, ils vont essayer d'être comme ça. Et ils vont vouloir prouver à tout le monde qu'ils n'ont pas besoin de lui pour gagner non plus. Et ils étaient soudés. Ils ont souffert, ouais. On aurait dû marquer, mais on n'a pas fait parce que leur gardien, il était déterminé aussi. Parce qu'on a manqué aussi, nous, des actions. Parce qu'eux aussi, ils ont, eu, ils ont tapé la barre, il ne faut pas l'oublier. Mmh. Au niveau de l'état d'esprit, le Portugal, c'est un exemple ce jour-là. Je pense que ce jour-là, ils étaient dans l'état d'esprit et ils étaient peut-être un cran au-dessus de nous. The Portuguese ship was hit by many waves. The Portuguese ship was bent, but didn't break. It didn't sink. History gave them one last flip of the coin. Fernando Santos brought on Eder in the 79th minute, and he immediately hurt the French defense. Right before the final whistle, André Pierre Gignac hit the crossbar. It was a sign from the football gods. They'd chosen their side. The 2016 European Championship title would go to Portugal. In the 109th minute, Eder took a shot and scored. They only needed one. And to think, Eder definitely wouldn't have played if Cristiano Ronaldo wasn't injured. Amazing stories sometimes hang by a thread, on a detail, on a fraction of a second. On July 10th, 2016, Portugal cried twice. Once through sadness, once through happiness. Muito obrigado. Esta vitória, este europeu, é de todos vocês, todos que estão aqui em Portugal, todos os imigrantes. Entramos na história de Portugal, somos os primeiros a ganhar uma competição importante pelo nosso país, mas vocês merecem. Foram espetáculos do princípio ao fim e sempre acreditaram em nós. Muito obrigado a todos. At the end of the match, Cristiano Ronaldo went to sit in the Portuguese dugout. Well, sit isn't exactly the right term. Cristiano Ronaldo was overexcited. He didn't stop encouraging and motivating his teammates. And his injury allowed the football world to see what kind of coach he would be if he chose a career as a manager. The multiple Ballon d'Or has been very mysterious on this subject. In May 2019, he said that he wouldn't rule out this career change. And in December 2019, he said this. Right now, I'm not interested in becoming a coach. But maybe one day I'll get bored and want to do it. You should never say never. He also said this. If I had to become a coach one day, I would be a motivator. A coach has to pass on their passion and talent to the team. For example, I like to have fun, dribble, shoot, score goals. I have to pass this on to the team as a motivating force, of course. Sorry, Cristiano, but we already knew that. We saw everything. Even if he seems hesitant and mysterious on this topic, CR7's future seems to be a long way from the dugout. In the short term, his future is already focused on defending his European title. And then, why not go after the ultimate title? The one he dreams about. The one that all of Portugal dreams about. And dreams are made to come true.